Today, we're gonna to be talking about building a rental management system. And this has a lot of different use cases. It could be for equipment or properties, but basically we want some kind of way that we have people who want our inventory and we wanna connect the two together. Now, historically, this is something that's been really tricky for no-code systems like Airtable to be able to do. And there's a couple reasons for this. Number one is that you end up using a ton of records in the database. So if you had 10 pieces of equipment and 16 time slots a day, and you wanna run this over 60 days, you can see how many different records that's going to end up creating in the back end. And that's really not a great database design. The other issue is that most no-code form builders really aren't that powerful. You're not gonna be able to customize the way that the data comes from the back end to display on the form. So in this video, I'm going to be using the no-code AI app builder called Zite. Hey, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we help companies like yours build internal apps for your business. Okay, so let's jump into the application. As you're building with Zite, you build this through prompts that you interact with the LLM over here on the left-hand side. But I'm not gonna show you all of the prompts that I use to do this. Instead, we're gonna take a look at the application itself. The first thing that it did was create a dashboard for me based on my prompt, track our inventory and rentals. Let's go to our rentals tab. And in our rentals, this is going to show all of the different rentals that we already have. And the main functionality that we're gonna talk about is this actual rental form that I can press over here. So for this particular use case, we're gonna talk about renting boats, renting equipment to people. And these people are gonna interact with us and we're gonna put in orders for them. This could be something that they manage on the front end or we have someone at our storefront be able to do it. But the very first thing that we need to do is we need to capture that customer's information. Now with a lot of no-code platforms, we're kind of limited in how this works. One of the tricky things about most no-code form builders is that they really only connect to a single table. In this case, we wanna be able to connect to our customers, be able to connect to our equipment and accessories. And so we need something that allows us to interact like that. So in this step, we can select from our existing customers. We've just got some dummy data here. If they're already in the system, I can just go ahead and select that customer. But alternatively, we have people who aren't our customers and we wanna be able to create their customer information and not have to go through a series of different steps, different forms to be able to create it. So I can simply check on new customer, put in their name, their phone, email. We can customize what kind of attributes we wanna collect here, but this is going to actually create that customer record in the background if it's a brand new customer. In this case, we'll choose from an existing one, Jane Smith. And the next thing I wanna do is choose the time that they're booking this for. So I've got a date picker and I can put in tomorrow's date. And then we'll use a start time and in this case, I wanted to operate in half hour increments. So let's put this at 9 a.m. And this kind of stuff, we can create our own business logic around. So for example, we could go by 15 minute increments, or we might want to have certain different business hours on different days. That's what we can do without having to actually update the code every single time is build a configurator where we actually set up this logic. So by default, with my initial prompt and how I created this, it just put a time field where I could type in the time. But given that most people start at certain fixed times, I thought it would be more useful to have this time picker as opposed to having to manually key in that information. And for this kind of use case, we typically just wanna say, hey, let's book it for a couple hours or have a half day rate. So let's book it for a half day rather than having to mentally calculate this ourselves. what a half day would be if we started at 9 a.m. Up here, you can see we're tracking how many pages of the form we're on, so we can go on to our second step. And then here's where the business logic gets really fun. So here we can choose a boat, and you can see that our kayak number one, boat 001, is unavailable. It's already booked. This rental's already booked from 8.30 to 12.30. So this is what a traditional no-code platform can't really do for the most part. You could maybe put in some kind of filter to say, if boat is unavailable, but then you'd have to do all of this backend logic to update the actual status of that boat. In reality, this isn't a static status. This boat is not always unavailable. It's simply unavailable in this time slot. So we shouldn't update a status of a boat to always be unavailable if it's just certain times of certain days that it's actually unavailable. And to think through the business logic, essentially what we're saying is, hey system, go out and find all of the boats and then find the rental times that conflict with the time that we selected on the first page. If there's a conflict, then we want to gray that out. We want to make sure that we can't actually select it. 
And so that logic isn't dependent on thousands of records of available time slots. Instead, it's just looking at the conflicting rental times. So we're not dependent on this multitude of data to keep organized in the system. Instead, we can just do a little bit of logic in JavaScript on the front end. Now, another feature I like about this is we can change how this displays. So I want to have images of the boats themselves. That was just another prompt to be able to update what actually displays. Now, these boats in inventory terms are considered serialized. What that means is each boat is specifically unique. It might have a serial number or something that we're going off of where we need to track the actual status of that individual boat. But there's other kinds of inventory here, such as our accessories. So here we have accessories like life jackets where we still want to keep track of them, but really we think about these in bulk. We don't care particularly about the unique identifier of that life jacket. We just wanna make sure that we collect all 10 of our life jackets at the end of the day. Now, one other kind of inventory that we would have, we don't have for this use case, is considered to be consumable inventory. So some of the construction projects that we've worked on, for example, you might have something like nails. You need to actually track the inventory and you buy those nails in bulk, but once you use them, they're gone. So you still need to track the transfer of that inventory and when to actually purchase more of it. But consumable inventory is different from this bulk inventory, where bulk, we wanna make sure that we get it back. So here you can see at this time slot, we have eight of our 10 life jackets available. And that's because the first person who rented during this time checked out two of our life jackets. Therefore, we need to make sure that we have the active amount. Again, we can't just use a status field here. You can't just say, what's our fixed quantity? Oh, do we have eight of 10 available? Those aren't fields that we're tracking on the life jacket on the accessories table. Because again, at any point in time, that's actually fluctuating. So to track that, we've got these line items for the accessories to show us how many are checked out at any single point in time. Let's check out three of these. We can update the payment status if we want, and let's create our rental record. So just to show you what this looks like on the back end, this is Zeit's built-in database. And here you can see we've got our different tables across the top. This is gonna feel similar to Airtable. And I just wanna quickly show you how we've structured the data to make this all work with our front end. So here I have a table for boats. This is our serialized inventory. We have a unique identifier for each one of these. This kayak is separate from this kayak. And I've added an image here. We could add other attributes about this as well. Maybe how many people can actually ride in that boat. Next up, we have the accessories. And remember that accessories themselves are not serializable. Instead, these are bulk inventory. So here I have my life jackets and we have a total quantity of 10. Now remember, if you try to build this on your own with AI, that what you don't wanna see here is total quantity and a field for available quantity. That shows that the AI doesn't actually understand what's going on. And that's how the AI initially built it for me. It wanted to take the easiest path just to say, oh yeah, we've got a total quantity field and how many are available. But again, remember, that kind of database structure doesn't work because you're wondering about when are those life jackets available, not just are they available at any point in time. Then I've got our rentals here, and the rentals are gonna be the record, the primary record that's actually generated when we finish booking that form. So here we have it tied to our customer, tied to our boat. This is stuff that we don't really have to look at on the back end. We'd create a UI for this to make it a little bit easier to see. But you can see it's got our start and end time. This was calculated with that duration dropdown. The duration dropdown isn't even a field here. We just had that on the front end to help us calculate that logic before it saves it into the database. Then we've got our customer records. You can see we've got those three initial ones and we'd be able to add new ones through the form. And then finally, we have rental accessories. And these rental accessories are tied to our rental. And then we've got it tied to life jacket. This is a lookup to show us the total quantity. And then we've got the quantity being consumed at that point in time. I hope this was helpful for you to see how we can build a rental management engine that's not dependent on making thousands of records, something that no-code platforms really aren't that good at. If you have any questions about your own business apps or automations, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free consultations.